So, Selina, I'd like to start with you first. You've seen the format. Just to start us off, what it is that you exactly do at CleanWorks, Clean, Climb, Climbworks, I should say. And um, then we'll go to some questions from the others. Here you go. Yes, so hello, everyone. Um, I work for Climbworks. It's a Swiss startup. Um, some of you might have heard about the, the IPCC report, which was released in October 2018. <coughs> It was the special report on a global warming of 1.5 degree. And the basic message of, of this report was that, of course, we have to reduce our emission, our greenhouse gas emissions. We have to transition to re renewable energies. But in order to reach this goal for the long term, we will also have to remove significant amount of CO2 from the atmosphere. And at Climeworks, this is actually what we do. We have a solution for that. We are a machine manufacturer, and our machines capture CO2 from the air, and we then store it in the ground. Thank you. It's very clear and concise. Frederick, you're with Boston Consulting Group. What's your role in all of this? Thanks, Max. It's actually <coughs> a tricky question, asking uh, consultants, you know, how transformative we are, especially when you have such uh, I didn't say how transformative people. you are. I said, what's your role in all this? All right. <laughs> um, so as a management company, of course, we help our clients driving change in whatever they do. Uh, so helping them taking the right decisions, making the right strategic moves, building up, scaling up an organization, designing the process, raising up, the, choosing the technology, etc. And uh, I think uh, why we're here right now is that we had a realization a few years ago. Uh, so you might think only a few years ago we might be not so bright after all, but where we thought after all climate is climate thing, the climate issue is not such an issue. It's actually a crisis. Mm -hmm. it, it's an emergency. Um, and this is why now in every single conversation we have with our clients, whether we talk about manufacturing, supply chain, organization, we're pushing the climate agenda. I'm saying, oh, look, great if we do that, it's cost effective. Now what's the impact on our scope three emission? What's the impact on our you know, ESG rating? And pushing that, actually helping also people inside realizing that they need to go more. They need to drive way, way faster the change that we all need. Thank you. Ben? Well, first, thank you for inviting us to... Uh, first, let me announce the company. I didn't think I said the name of your company. Vin is Vin Lee is the CEO of Kianos Biotechnologies. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're very honored because there's the, um, the machine and the brains. Yeah. Uh, basically, <laughs> we come here with the microalgae. Um, what we uh, provide is a real focus on uh, global warming and uh, also uh, air quality. And those are growing concerns for cities all around the world. And we believe that the solution was already found two billion years ago, actually when there was no oxygen. There was one organism which found the magic way of turning CO2 and light into oxygen. And they do it at an amazing speed. They, they double every three days. And that changed the world. And uh, that uh, organism is microalgae, and the process is a photosynthesis. And now 50% of the oxygen that you breathe comes from the sea. So we actually harness the power of microalgae uh, in an urban device, urban furniture, that can actually suck in the, the CO2 and the pollution. So what you see here is actually the equivalent of 100, 100 trees in terms of carbon capture, and it also filters the NOx and the fine particles, like 99% uh, of it. And uh, we also use the algae that we, uh, that we produce to put it back into the soil and improve the soil productivity for crops. So we're doing both air quality, uh, global warming, and sustainable food. And we think that just one uh, challenge wasn't enough. Where do you produce the algae? We, we produce inside it. Actually, you Inside? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the green stuff. Basically, you have water. Ah, okay. You put the algae, and it doubles every three days. Okay. And at the same time, it captures the CO2. So what, next question now for everyone. What's it going to take to scale this up? I mean, you're doing it. It seems to be working. Mm -hmm. What's needed now to take it to the next level? More volume. <laughs> and basically, uh, if you take a swimming pool, you, you have the equivalent of 2,500 trees. And, uh, but the problem is not actually more volume. It's actually building a business model that is scalable, uh -huh. creating a value chain okay. so, so that not only the cities uh, pay for it, well, they, they do pay for it when it's the right moment, elections and things like this. <laughs> but the, the, the real important thing is actually how to make it viable. And because you create the, the microalgae, you provide a service with a better air quality, 
uh, you know that the algae can be put in the soil and create new stuff. So people can pay for it and participate. Thank you. Frederick, you, you mentioned um, that you're talking to your clients a lot about you know, the climate emergency. The theme of this this afternoon has been energy and carbon emissions. I'm wondering, from your point of view, not any particular clients, but how, how serious are those out there who need to be aware of what people such as these two colleagues are doing are? Is it, is it still that you're kind of pushing a, a boulder up a hill or, or is it lighter now from a consultant point of view? I think it's changing every day. Um, and that's maybe the positive thing. Like if you ask me the same question next week, maybe I'll, I'll be even more positive than today. Um, what's changing is that people are realizing that it's not yet just another technical challenge that humanity is facing. Um, it's not just, let's put in place what we have uh, you know, in, uh, in the ideas of our engineer and everything's going to be fine. The, the two degrees pathway that is facing us means that we need to curb our emissions, and the lady just reminded us, by 55% in 35 years. So it, if it sounds unrealistic, it's not only because it is, it's actually, because it's actually unreal. Mm. Over the recent years, we have increased our emissions. So not only are we continuing to the war, but we are actually accelerating. So, but yet, people are starting to realize this. Like, I t I've been teaching at, at HSC for six years, and six years ago, we were not mentioning this. F four years ago, one guy in the room was like, hey, by the way, have you heard of climate change? And this year, let's start the class with it. Mm -hmm. um, the next step is going for everybody to realize that it's about everything we do in every, everything we buy, how we move, how we eat, um, how we consume, that we can actually do something. Um, uh, so let's, let's push every single technology, and I think what, what we have in, in, you know, on the table is fantastic. And so up to us uh, to actually change fundamentally the way we live, because unfortunately, carbon, fossil fuels, and, and, and other greenhouse emissions are, are in everything we do. So we need to, to think that, and that is slowly happening. And uh, Celine, your input to this, where, where we've steered the conversation now, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? So I, w I will speak about the, um, the scale-up roadmap yeah. of, of, of Climeworks. Today we have a capacity of about 1,000 tons of CO2 per year that we can capture and, and store. Um, by the end of this year, we'll be at 3,000 3, tons of CO2. And to be climate relevant, our, our goal is to be able to capture 1% of the global emissions per year. Um, we will reach this roadmap by the end of the decade now. So by 2030, we will capture over 100 million of, of tons of CO2 per year. And, and store it in the ground. And to reach that, of course, we have to increase our production capacity. We have to develop machines, basically. So we have to, to build machines, like we are building 80 million cars per year. We have to build our, um, our collectors. Um, and on, the, on another hand, we have, as, as you were mentioning, we have to, to build and, and to develop a, a very strong business case. And this is one of my role, is to bring our solution to market. And for to bring this, this today, a, a very expensive technology to market, we need pioneering clients. And so we work with clients, and we call them pioneers. And so this is what my responsibility is, is really to find companies who today are willing to engage with us on a long-term long -term journey. And I think the, the latest announcement, which have been um, very public companies like Microsoft taking engagement and committing to being carbon negative by 2050 are really helping this way, but this is, it's really this, this journey and this path that we need to, um, to go to, through. A similar follow-up question to the ones I asked uh, Frederick about pushing the boulder up the hill. Uh, how easy is it now to, to, to identify these clients or to convince potential clients? Well, compared to the past, say five years ago, two years ago, one year ago. Yeah. Well, I'm basically very new to the to this to this environment as well. So, very speaking about these these technologies and and bringing these topics to to companies, but it's definitely easier because carbon dioxide removal is is something that is very technical. I mean, we are a machine manufacturer, so mm -hmm. it's not very very exciting as a topic. But now that um, carbon dioxide removal is um, in grind in, in reports such as the one from the IPCC as one of the, the solution to reach the cl our climate targets for the long term, it's definitely becoming more and more in the consciousness of, of people that we have to do something about that. So companies are realizing and are, are taking 
uh, some of them, not all of them, but are taking a share of, of, of their responsibility in that. So, yeah, it's, it's a, an interesting journey. <laughs> and Vin, if you find it easier, harder, or the same to make your case in recent years? Well, um, before, I, I haven't been doing that for a long time. So <laughs> the, 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 the real thing for me that was important was really to connect with the people. Most of the time we get lost in the numbers, we mm -hmm. talk about gigatons, we talk, and, and we don't get a grasp of what that really means. And uh, for, for example, when we, we brought the, uh, a prototype, so we have a tube of algae, we go to several cities and we show, hey, here's a tube of algae, it's gonna clean the city. And uh, so people come and they say, so uh, we want to see the algae, we want to see it work. So it's important for people to actually realize something is happening. And uh, so, like, there was one time there was a, a merry-go-round for kids and a guy operating it. And uh, he stays there like uh, all year long. So he comes to us, he asks, what is it? We say, it's going to purify the air. And he says, that's good, that's what we need. Because every time I go back home, when I blow my nose, it's, it's, uh, it's black. So we, we, we have to give some type of uh, reality to what is happening so that people actually realize. And the people are the ones who are going to make things change by their votes, by their wallets, by everything. I see you nodding when you're talking about people. I mean, just privately now, if you can. I mean, how do you think, take off your BSG hat for 30 seconds. How do we make the case to the people better? Same way you make it to your clients. What needs to be done to make the case more to you know, the wider community? No, I, I fully agree with what has just been said. I think what's really important for people is that they realize it's, it's a lot of individual choices that we all need to do. If I take just one example, you know, if you ask people, hey, what's going to make the change against, against climate change? Um, they will come up you know, with usual technologies such as renewables and electric mobility. Mm -hmm. Well, if you take electric mobility, they will see that as a big game changer. If you do the math, out of the 50 gigatons, sorry, speaking gigatons now, um, of, of CO2 equivalent per year, eight comes from transport. Out of the eight, eight, eight. out of the eight, only four come from individual vehicles. Um, out of these four gigatons, you say, well, every year we may be replacing five to 10% only, and that's the best case, and that's way more than what we're doing right now, but let's assume we can reach that. We replace five, 10% of that fleet with electric car. Now that fee is actually increasing because more and more people are having, are having cars, so it's actually not five, maybe it's 3%. Now the 3% that we're replacing, well, we are using carbon to create the battery to manufacture it, especially if we manufacture it in China or in Poland. We are using carbon to charge it, especially if we charge it in Germany or in China. So the CO2 emissions is actually not 100%, but maybe 50% at best, maybe 20% in average or 10%. So you do the 50% or 30% of 20% or 10%, at the end of the day, the actual potential of that technology is less than one gigaton. It's actually in the same scale than what she's doing. Mm. And yet, nobody knows about what those guys are doing. Right. And I think that's, that's the message I want to give to people. It's, it's not about electric mobility. Of course it is. But it's also about clam works. It's all about microalgae. It's all about the steak you're eating at lunchtime. And uh, we need all of that if yeah. we want to survive. Thanks for that really useful insight. I, I saw you nodding to that. So what do you think needs to be done to make sure that what you're doing in your, your business, what he's doing, is more widely known and so we can really push for this change faster? I think a very important thing is about information. Um, we are not informed enough, and you were mentioning it before as well, about your hydro hydrogen company. It's people do not know about these, these um very innovative technologies that we have available. And Bertrand Picard was also mentioning it before. He wants to build this platform to bring this solution to market. So people have to get informed, read, learn, and, and speak to each other and participate in such events to actually hear about these, these innovations to go to market. And then we have to push them and, and develop and be able to to have concrete solutions which are actually also solving the problems and that people actually want to buy in the end and, mm -hmm. and, and contribute to. So it's, it's also a way of bringing it to market to the individuals. And we're also thinking about how can we bring our product to the individual engagement in the end. So how do you engage with, the, with one individual person? So yeah, it's about engagement of each and every one of us. Vin, it's clear to me that Although what you alone, what you are doing is great, you alone can't change that sector. How many other players are there out there? Maybe not competitors, but 
collaborators and what's going to be needed to make sure that you all together really move together yeah. with momentum? It's, it's really a, a value chain and you, you, you have to find what you're good at and do only that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, I'm not good at building uh, urban furniture. I'm not good at... Uh, 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 the only thing I do is grow microalgae. <laughs> and, and I think that's enough. And we have that technology on it. And we want to, to uh, build on people to make it known that they can make a change. And we want to, to uh, actually build something so that there's a, something positive that uh, grows out of it. Because most of the time, it's always depressing to talk about climate change. Everyone's like, we're all going to die. We're not going to have kids because uh, they, they do make uh, CO2 and make uh, the world a, a worse place. Well, we, we can build those uh, circles where we, we take the CO2, we put it back into the ground because we consume, and then we, we're not evil. <laughs> we have to be given the opportunity to, uh, to make something good. Yeah, I totally agree. A few years ago, I wrote a report with the late Kofi Annan when I worked in the Africa Progress Panel, the report was just before the Paris Climate Conference. Mm -hmm. So everyone was so depressed. But what are we going to call it? We called it Power People Planet. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at the opportunities and then see, you know, what are the challenges to achieving most of these opportunities? So from a consultant point of view again now, I mean, how, what is the opportunity in this crisis? I mean, I hear that in the China Mandarin, that the symbol for crisis is the same as opportunity. What is it from, from where you sit? The opportunity in this in this crisis, this challenge. Well, I think the opportunity is that at the end of the day, we all live way better than we do today, and, and every word matters in that sentence. We all live way better than we do today. Um, I think this crisis makes us realize that our system is somewhat wrong, mm. and that uh, we can have just as much wellness, you know, a great life, achieving things. Um, great things to, to, to go through, great things to possess even, um, but without consuming that much of natural resources and much generating more. And you know, when you look at, at every single levers, there's a lot of things where we can, well, we can actually much less and be happier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the opportunity of, 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 of what we, where we're going through. It's a positive message. On your side, positive message, opportunity? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for us to start to be here and to be able to share and learn from each other. We were discussing about a business opportunity just now, so I think having this kind of innovation just shows that from the problem, we can actually develop great innovations and find purpose in all of that. So it's for me, it's I feel like I have a very pur purposeful job to bring this message and to work with companies and helping them reach their climate targets, speak about their engagement in, in this area. So this is definitely very positive as well. Well, thank you. It's just about time to wind this up. So I want to just ask you all, this is the last session of the day in this hall. Very briefly, maybe 30 seconds, what would you like people in this room who have heard you now for about 25 minutes, what do you want them to leave with? What's the kind of key message they should take home to their friends, to their families from this session? Starting with you, Vin. Um, okay. Uh, I the think... Clock's ticking. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Uh, it's putting a lot of pressure on the... I know these guys are thinking while I speak, so... Um, <laughs> um, what was the question again? <laughs> Growing algae, what do you want people to remember from this yeah, session? Well, I, I think it's very important uh, to, uh, to be informed and uh, to, to look into uh, what's happening. Uh, I also believe that uh, we should believe in mankind's resilience in finding ways of uh, coping with uh, what's happening and uh, at the same time uh, really uh, try to... Um, attend more of those events and uh, come and talk to me. I like to talk to people. Thank you. Excellent. Now, yeah. 30 seconds for you. See that's yeah, but you're going first. You can, yeah. you can still thunder. You can still thunder. No, I think what I want to, if, if there's one thing I'd like you to do, is to read. Um, what I realized over the past years is there's, there's a lot we can read in the press, but it's way, way more that nobody talks about ever. Uh, and there's great books, there's great people, uh, and there's a lot more opportunities that we actually see. It's just the top of the iceberg. Thank you, Vin Lee. Thank you, Ferry Jobert. And now, Celine Olsen, the last word goes to you. You have 30 seconds. What do you want people to remember from this session, from yes, what you said? Yes, I'm ready. So, ready for my sales pitch. pitch. Uh, w we were speaking about the, the engagement of individuals. Uh, actually, at Climeworks, we now have a product for individuals. So, you can all go online on climeworks.shop and you can register and subscribe for a monthly carbon dioxide removal just for you. And so, we will capture 
ca uh, CO2 from the air for you in the amount that you choose and store it back in the ground. Please go online and register. Thank you, and thank you for talking, as we say in radio, to time. Three seconds to go. The session is over. I'd like to thank my guests this afternoon, all of them, and those from this session, Céline Olsen, Frédéric Jobert, and Vin Lee. I'm Maximilian Jarrett. Thank you for joining us. Tomorrow we have more conference uh, discussions here in the hall, and I'll be speaking tomorrow morning at 11 on Smart Cities. So thank you for coming. Have a great day.